Time was running out for the U.S. soldiers, Marines, and their allies in Vietnam. The war in Indochina was raging on, and the U.S. Air Force was struggling to develop a new aircraft that could replace the aging World War II-era fighters used for close air support. Without proper CAS, the men on the ground were barely able to fight the North Vietnamese and come out of the thick jungles unscathed. As the situation reached crisis proportions, the Air Force finally launched an ambitious program to develop a new close air support platform, the AX program. Only two prototype aircraft were chosen for the tight competition, with Northrop's YA-9 coming out victorious. Time was now of the essence to have it ready on time and help the ground troops in Vietnam push back the communists. Close Air Support Aircraft Military aviation reached an unprecedented level of technological advancement during World War II, and one of them was a dedicated strike aircraft designed for close air support, or CAS. The objective of these warplanes was to provide support to friendly ground troops with heavy fire from the air. The aircraft with this role were the Lockheed P-38 Lightning and the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt. However, in September of 1947, the U.S. Army Air Force turned into the United States Air Force, a new separate branch of the armed forces, leading to a series of restrictions on the type of fixed-wing aircraft the Army could acquire and produce. When the Korean War broke out in 1950, the USAF used the powerful Douglas Sky Raider to fulfill the CAS role and support the U.S. Army, Marines, South Koreans, and other U.N. Allied forces. As the years passed, the Sky Raider began to show its age, even more so when compared to other World War II-era aircraft that fulfilled such a role during the Vietnam War. The Army could no longer rely on the USAF for close air support and decided to push its own program forward with the AAFSS Advanced Aerial Fire Support System. Consequently, the program produced the short-lived Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne attack helicopter, but the Air Force considered it a threat and decided to develop a new CAS aircraft to use in Vietnam. A Desperate Program Worried about coming up with a proper replacement for the Douglas Sky Raider, the Air Force staff began to look for a quick way to solve the problem the branch had at hand, finding an innovative CAS design before the Army came up with a more efficient experiment like that of the AH-56 Cheyenne attack helicopter. Time was running out, and USAF Chief of Staff General John P. McConnell knew it well. First and foremost, the lives of Army soldiers, Marines, South Koreans, and other Allied forces fighting over the Vietnamese jungles and hills were at stake. The inefficiencies of the aging CAS aircraft were taking their toll on the men fighting the Communists, and sooner or later, the Air Force would be blamed. With this in mind, McConnell followed up on his concerns with an innovative close air support aircraft design, noting that the ongoing competition with the U.S. Army was also a matter of prestige. After many attempts, the USAF finally issued a Requirements Action Directive, or RAD, in December of 1966. The objective was simple, to develop a dedicated close air support aircraft with the latest technological innovations. By March of 1967, the Requirements Action Directive evolved into the AX, or Attack Experimental Program Office, tasked with coming up with the desired design. After establishing the basic parameters, the Program Office issued the specifications to over 20 defense contractors with a Request for Information, or RFI, guide. The Air Force then awarded multiple study contracts to companies such as Grumman, McDonnell, General Dynamics, and Northrop to develop the best design, armor, equipment, engine, fuel, and weaponry for the USAF's first CAS aircraft. The intent was to develop a low-cost aircraft with low-level maneuverability, low-maintenance requirements, heavy ordnance load, rough field operational capabilities, a strong airframe for pilot survivability, and a speed of over 400 miles per hour. With the Vietnam War in full swing, the Army and the Marines desperately needed all the air support they could muster to fight off the Viet Cong guerrilla 
and the well-disciplined North Vietnamese Army. Evolving Requirements While the defense contractors were still conducting preliminary studies for the AX aircraft, a series of grim circumstances slowed the project. Besides the ongoing confrontations across the Indochina landscape, tensions kept rising with the Soviet Union over Europe. Both the Army and the Air Force had been conducting military studies regarding how they would react to an invasion of Western Europe by the USSR and its allies. The US and NATO concluded that if such an attack ever came to be, soldiers stationed at the borders with the USSR would need all the close air support they could get to attack armored infantry vehicles and Soviet tanks. As such, the USAF made some tweaks to the original request for proposal so that it could also serve in a possible combat scenario against the Soviet Union in Western Europe. The new requirements included a maximum speed of over 460 miles per hour, a takeoff distance of over 4,000 feet, a 285-mile range, a payload of 16,000 pounds, and an expected aircraft cost of almost $1.4 million. Moreover, they were looking for an all-weather aircraft, armed with a gun capable of tearing apart advancing Soviet armor. The 30mm Cannon Knowing that other companies were already busy developing the different components of the AX aircraft, the USAF decided to issue a separate request for proposal for the main armament of the CAS aircraft. As such, veteran pilots from the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines were consulted about the performance of the 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon during their tours of duty in Vietnam. The M61 Vulcan had become the standard cannon of numerous fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft, and the Air Force was keen on hearing such opinions. The consensus was that the 20mm Vulcan was well-liked and an extremely powerful weapon against most targets. Even so, it had one defect. As the war progressed and the North Vietnamese acquired newer armored vehicles, the Vulcan proved incapable of dismantling targets with thicker armor. Thus, the USAF concluded that a rotary gun with a larger caliber was necessary. Moreover, the AX aircraft had to be fitted with a gigantic 30mm rotary cannon with a desired fire rate of over 4,000 rounds a minute. Only Philco Ford and General Electric came up with designs for the 30mm gun and the prototype rotary cannon was designated GAU-8 in mid-1971. Soon, the USAF called for the development of four different types of ammunition. Armor-piercing incendiary, target practice, high-explosive incendiary, and semi-armor-piercing high-explosive rounds. By 1974, the powerful gun was ready for combat. Northrop's YA-9A Six companies submitted proposals to the U.S. Air Force, but only Northrop and the Fairchild Republic were selected. Both companies were awarded a contract in December of 1970 to develop prototypes. They were the YA-9A and the YA-10A. Northrop's YA-9 design went the conventional way, with a design that resembled an upsized Bell P-59 Era Comet, the first jet-powered aircraft developed by the U.S. during World War II. The YA-9 was a monoplane of all-riveted aluminum alloy construction with chemically milled skins and honeycomb structures. It featured straight-shoulder-mounted wings that gave ample space to store underwing weapons. In addition, the wings also housed the fuel required by the U.S. Air Force. The Northrop engineers also made this decision to keep any flammable materials away from ignition sources and prevent instant damage if the aircraft was shot during combat. Regarding aerodynamics, the wing design improved control when flying at lower altitudes, which was critical for the CAS role. The aircraft's cockpit was located aft, ahead of the leading edge of the wings. The pilot sat in a nose cone assembly with a bubble-style canopy that offered excellent visibility of the surroundings. Moreover, the cockpit was encircled by a bathtub of armor made of aluminum for the prototype, but envisioned with titanium if approved for production and all the controls were standard for aircraft of the time. 
engines and armament. The YA-9's dual hydraulic flight control system had a manual backup to prevent a single hit from causing control failure. It was powered by two Lycoming YF-102 LD-100 turbofan engines that generated 7,500 pounds of thrust each and supported a maximum speed of over 520 miles per hour. The engines were based on the Avro Lycoming T-55 turboshaft that powered Bell's CH-47 Chinook and had a rate of climb of 5,000 feet per minute. They were located on either side of the fuselage under the wings and exhausted near the tail unit. The prototype had a large cruciform stabilizer that improved directional stability for low-level flight, and its tail assembly comprised a single vertical tail fin with upward-tilted horizontal planes located along its side. Split ailerons were also fitted in the wings and could be used as air brakes. Coupled with the aircraft's rudder, sideways control forces could be applied without yawing to facilitate weapon aiming. In addition, the YA-9 featured a low-clearance undercarriage. Its main legs were below the prototype center mass, with a nose leg installed under the cockpit. And although it was expected to be fitted with a 30mm GAU-8 cannon, it was not finished by the time the prototype was scheduled for testing with the Air Force. Instead, the aircraft was fitted with the smaller 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon. Finally, the YA-9 had 10 underwing hardpoints that allowed it to carry up to 16,000 pounds worth of weapons, including the Maverick air-to-ground missiles for the CAS role. Testing the YA-9 The first prototype flew for the first time on May 30, 1972, and a second one followed in late August. The test pilots claimed it had excellent handling and felt like a fighter aircraft. Northrop's YA-9 and Fairchild Republic's YA-10 were pitched against each other between October and December of 1972, through a series of rigorous tests to decide which design was superior. The tests took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California, and although Northrop's YA-9 met all the U.S. Air Force's requirements, the YA-10 was eventually chosen for production. The YA-10's unique design and its externally mounted nacelles helped reduce its signature from ground-based trackers and also increased its survivability. If one of the two external engines was lost, the aircraft still had a fighting chance, contrary to Northrop's design. Additionally, the high-mounted engines kept the intake openings from ingesting debris during attacks at low altitudes. Still, the two YA-9 prototypes were sent to NASA for testing before being officially retired. The Lycoming engines were then removed and used in a C-8 Buffalo airframe as part of NASA's and Boeing's quiet short-haul research aircraft study. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical stories about aircraft and air battles. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.